Welcome to this overview of the Traffic Engineering Webinar Series at the Florida T-Square Center as part of UFTI. My name is Bill Sampson. I'm with the University of Florida. I run the McTran Center as well as the T-Square Center. And you see contact information for me there if you have any questions. This webinar is run over four afternoons, consecutive afternoons, from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock Eastern time to generate a 12-hour uh, training course. During the course, we use Adobe Connect. Uh, we don't ask for video or audio from participants. Instead, we address questions or comments that are posted in the chat as we go along. And as always, beyond the webinar, uh, always available to help with anything that comes up that we might be able to help. At the end, you get a, a, a PDH credit of 12 and a certificate is, is emailed to you. Part of this workshop has uh, exercises that are hands-on problems, software demonstrations, those kinds of things. So it's broken into two pieces. Uh, the first day, roughly, is congestion. We look at road users, their habits, and, and how drivers drive. And we, we start to investigate uh, studies that will help us to uh, control the roadways and advise the drivers better. Traffic volume studies, speed data studies, uh, to get things like um, uh, peak hour factor and um, 85th percentile speed. Traffic control devices, we take a, a brief look at the MUTCD and spend some time in the signal warrant analysis procedure going through all nine warrants and uh, culminating in an exercise. We look at signal components, we look at the, what, what makes the signal operate, how it operates, and timing coordination at some level. On the second day, the second uh, half, we look at the highway capacity manual and uh, we do an overview of the manual. We look a little bit at the software. You see the graphic down there. And then we delve into the procedures for signalized intersections, uh, two-way stop control, always stop control, and roundabout analysis. And we kind of pull all that together to look at a traffic impact analysis example, run through uh, the steps and the process for an actual real world one uh, toward the end of the course. So again, with congestion, we look at demand and capacity. <clears throat> the main reason is, is, is congestion has increased significantly in the last 20 years, where demand has roughly doubled while we've only added 5% capacity. Looking at demand instead of stop bar counts is very important for congested signals, and we'll see how to do that and actually work a problem. Getting the 85th percentile speed helps in many ways, setting speed limits, uh, percent in pace says uh, how contiguous is the platoons going to and from uh, signals, let's say. We look at each of the nine warrants uh, for our signal analysis, talk about the combinations of warrants and sometimes local policies and how data is collected or used. And we move on to look at signal controllers and detectors and conflict monitors and, and loops and video and cabinets. Uh, on how signals work, and then we, the operation, we, we look into pre-timed, uh, fully actuated, and most often we're most concerned with coordinated actuated signals that are coordinating signals along an arterial. And we look at that, we look at for the basics, the underlying theory of most signal timing optimization, and then a couple of optimization programs to see how you might do this in the real world. On the capacity side, we look at both the hobby capacity manual and the hobby capacity software. We do focus on the procedures in the manual, even though McTrans that I run is responsible for the software. The software is a tool, a tool that automates the manual exactly word for word. And so to use that tool well, you really need to understand the procedures in the manual to know what data to put in and what the reports really say when you're done. So we look at intersections only. We don't go into freeways in this particular class. We do in a capacity analysis class that, that we also do. 
we look at control delay percentile Q, 95th percentile Q typically uh, for things like how long should the turn lane be, travel speed, uh, and level of service. Level of service for signals and for other intersections is controlled by control delay. Level of service for uh, urban streets is travel speed as a function of base reflow speed. For unsignalized intersections, we look at two-way stop control, which is a gap acceptance model, and look at critical and follow-up headway values to generate capacity and get delay. Always stop control is an iterative procedure where the user has very little control, but the procedure behind the scenes is fairly complicated. And then roundabouts. Roundabouts are lots of popular uh, popularity with roundabouts all over the country these days, and there's a, a nice intuitive procedure for roundabouts in the Highway Capacity Manual. All of these are implemented in the Highway Capacity software. Then we move on to signalized intersections, which is probably the most widely used a chapter in the manual module in the software, conventional intersections, and those get uh, spread into distributed intersections, sometimes called alternative intersections, restricted crossing U-turn, median U-turn, and displaced left turn intersections. Urban streets, we look at arterials with the, the modeling the platoon between the signals so we can model the effectiveness of coordination by producing something like called proportion arriving on green. The higher that is, the more vehicles have zero delay and the better the signal operates. And then we look at interchange ramp terminals, where it's the two signals controlling the interchange uh, freeway ramps coming to and from the arterial, including the, the, the verging diamond interchange, which is really popping up all over the country right now in that design. And then at the end, we look at traffic impact studies, which involved the trip generation manual, demand distribution, but also running that in highway capacity software, modeling existing conditions, uh, future conditions with the extra traffic, and mitigated, uh, mitigated analyses to, to judge the effectiveness of proposed improvements to uh, offset the trips generated by the development. So hopefully this makes sense and it's something you're interested in. You can take a look at the at the T-Square website. You can look at the, the McTrans website for the capacity course. <clears throat> if you have trouble locating anything, just shoot me an email. Be glad to point you in the right direction or answer any questions you might have about this training course. So I'm really hopeful that, uh, that you uh, participate and that at some point along the way, we'll see you in one of our courses. Thank you very much.